Okay, for time purposes, I'm going to jump into this. I've got a lot to cover in 30 minutes, so feel free to keep passing by. Um, no worries. Let me, uh, so I'm going to go into the ROI of storytelling and really some of the big picture issues that a lot of us have heard about. So at first, I'm just going to give you a sense of who, who we are, GLP Films. We're a content marketing agency, been around since 2008. That actually gives us nine years of experience in the industry. And I think it's something that's really a, a lot of people appreciate, just know, having been through a lot of change over the past nine years. Content marketing is really our area. area. You'll see two films I'll showcase today uh, looking at authentic storytelling, which is really our focus. Very character driven. We do focus exclusively on the travel trade industry. So this is our space. And our model is really looking at the full service approach where we've got the strategy on the content, the storytelling itself, and then a whole distribution strategy. And I'll talk about marketing, uh, the content marketing in a minute. Uh, just a sense of where we've sort of been over the years, produced over 200 films now in 30 destinations globally. We really tend to focus on emerging destinations. It's fun, it's exciting. As Cash said, you really get to engage with some really great people that are passionate and need help in marketing a destination and really telling their story. A lot of, we've had the opportunity to work with a lot of great brands, destinations, airlines, operators, uh, aggregators, uh, just, uh, and, and uh, just a whole, on the media side, just a whole range, small and large. And our model, again, looking at this full service approach, starting with the strategy, which I'll go into, the storytelling itself, which is the production work, and then the distribution. So I wanted to start off, this is a film we uh, just produced just uh, last year. How many folks have been to Kosovo? How many have been to Kosovo? Okay. Well, you're obviously, for, all right. Um, okay, well, I'm just gonna start this off. Just a great short story. We shot it for three days last year. Um, we focused on one character. It was really an adventure piece, uh, at least from the US perspective. Kosovo is, you know, when people think of Kosovo, they think of war. They think of, you know, really the, the battle in the Balkans and what happened many years ago. And so that's been a, a big opportunity and challenge for them to redevelop uh, the tourism sector or really develop it from the ground up. So it's really a great story of a, an emerging destination that has an exciting product. And again, this is just a short story to give you a glimpse of Kosovo. People don't know a lot for Kosovo. They just know about the war. And we need to change this kind of things. boy to my home and uh, my mom cared a lot for me when I went to climb my mom always said to me you are like a lizard you climb like a lizard this sport is not for you and I explained to my mom I said sometimes climbing is more safe than football because in football you can break your leg in climbing you see if you respect the rules it's uh, so safe People here they are friendly and you can talk with everybody, everybody can, can, can try to help you. I think this is in the Albanian culture. In tourism industry to work is interesting because always you meet new people, you learn a lot for the other culture. I like my job, it's my passion. I will continue. So hopefully, hello, okay. 
hopefully that now makes you excited to go to Coastville. So again, some of the issues I'm going to talk about in a minute, character, conflict, the challenge, very focused on an individual, his journey, his personal journey, so some of the elements of storytelling. So quick overview of what I'm going to cover through today, trends and challenges that are going on in the industry when you look at storytelling in the ROI, content strategies in general, and then show a case study at the very end of a film that we won a major award with last year. So on the trends and challenges, content marketing. You hear this talked about. You hear the contrast between traditional marketing and really now digital marketing. And, and really this is all about being, things being localized, things being targeted, things being authentic, and most importantly, the engagement aspect. Engagement is the key. That's why content is being created these days in different formats. If it's influencer content or other content, it's all about trying to engage people on the end, on, on a more personal level. So looking at some of the key trends, uh, influencers I'll talk about, and again, Cash, uh, for those of you that were just here, he went over a really nice overview on influencers and bloggers. Email marketing, it's back. Native advertising, you're seeing it more and more, and then video and storytelling. So looking at influencers, they're really people, it, 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 the, the great thing about influencers is bringing content down to a very personal level. You're talking about an individual that's traveling, a photographer, a writer, or, or just a, or a blogger, someone that's out there really capturing their own personal stories and getting it out to their individual audience. Chris Burkhart is a well-known uh, traveler, adventurer, photographer, and he's got a huge following, and he gets a lot of recognition and credit for that. I think ultimately though, when you look at user-generated content, it's a great, powerful tool. Why? Because it's personal. And you can really engage with that person and you respect their opinion, hopefully, and uh, want to follow uh, and, and follow up on that person's uh, recommendations. Now, on that recommendation side, one of the challenges of influence is what is the ROI? Just because people are clicking and liking and commenting, does that result in an ROI? Are people purchasing a trip? Are they actually going to a destination? What are they clicking on? Are they clicking on the beauty beautiful woman or the hot guy or are they clicking on the destination? So again, there's, there's a lot of questions on the ROI and what that actually is. Sort of a challenge and an opportunity for those. Uh, my clicker's a little fast here. Whoops. Sorry. So lastly, there are other options in looking at influencers, looking at writers. That's something that we do when we're out on filming on location. We want a writer with us because it brings different assets to the table. Not that we do engage with influencers too. Uh, again, it, it's really this multi-strategy, multi multi-purpose strategy. Okay, sorry, the clicker's uh, not deciding to cooperate. Okay, email marketing, the rebirth. Oh, well, sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna open these all up. Okay. Some of the challenges with, uh, I mean, one of the, so email is back, and it's back in the sense that it's very targeted, it's very localized. You have an audience that are getting your newsletter. And one of the challenges with social is the algorithms, Facebook, Instagram, they're all changing constantly. You have to monitor that. So email is something you can control. It's, you have your list, you can expand your list. There, and because it's so localized, and depending on the content you have, and obviously having, having a targeted list, having video, having some kind of engagement you can have with people, making it mobile, making a social aspect to it, tying it to your social pages, and uh, again, really being strategic with your email, it can be very effective. Native advertising, you're seeing this more and more and more. If you flip through an old magazine, remember print magazines we used to look at? You're seeing more and more native. You're also seeing it on digital, on websites. Um, because it, it does look very natural. Now, uh, and there are a lot of platforms now that you can distribute that content, so there are a lot of outlets. Now, it can be costly because one of the, one of the strategies of native advertising is making it look natural. And so it's hard, you have to be very strategic and it has to be done in a certain way to meet editorial guidelines. And uh, so there's some you know, upfront investment you have to make in it. And there is no guarantee, it is an ad. Video and storytelling. So then looking at the growth of video. Video is only growing and it's going to continue to grow. 85% uh, growth uh, in 2019, just two years from now. 
It's just astronomical how much. Uh, and the role of storytelling, because uh, video is growing so much, you have to differentiate. There's a lot of competition out there for good video. What is the definition of good video? How do you engage with people? Um, people are only going to be on a look at a video for five seconds, if that. So you have to be very smart with the content and ultimately know your audience and who are you trying to reach and what is the call to action that you want to have people engage with. How do, what is the response you're looking for? So again, challenges that you need to look at. On the video side, um, just to throw out a couple stats here, adding video to your landing page and increased conversion, 80%. Why? Engagement. People are going to see a video and they say, oh, I want to check out that trip. I want to check out that destination. I want to see what that product or service has to offer. So again, conversion. Sharing aspect, 92% of mobile users share videos on their device with friends. So that sharing aspect is going to dramatically increase your distribution and, and, and uh, reach. And fall of 2016, average views 85% with no sound. You're seeing that. So you're seeing now more and more on your Facebook feed text being written out because people are realizing, shoot, no one's turning on the volume here. This beautiful music that you heard that really presents Kosovo uh, is not able to be uh, leveraged. So again, you have to make sure you're strategic and you can communicate and text is definitely a, a key. So I think one of the challenges of content is there's a lot of content out there. People want more content, but there's, there's almost too much content. People want it, so it's just back and forth, supply and demand. So you have to be, again, that strategy and making sure the content you're producing is targeting the audience that you're trying to reach. And again, try not to flood the market. Quality over quantity. The bar is rising. So what is the definition of good video is going to change in a month from now, in six months from now, a year from now. Absolutely. So again, you're seeing this constantly trying to raise the bar. Uh, but you're also seeing different content formats. This isn't just about video. Photos, text, there are other ways to tell a story. Absolutely. I'm a photographer by trade. And so I really see the power of images. User generated content, video content. So there's a lot of different formats. And then lastly, uh, just having a strategy. So going into the content strategy itself. Oh. Okay, going into the uh, strategy development. So again, looking at this blueprint of how you're going to market. Market research, absolutely crucial. Where is a brand right now, a product, a service, a destination, a travel brand? Um, how are you going to reposition it? What's the competition like out in the industry? Identifying stories. So again, this is the take a step back. Look at what you have internally, and I'll go into this in a second. Looking at the content needs. How are you going to differentiate your, your brand, your product? And then lastly, the most important part, what are the goals behind all the work you're doing? What's the plan? How are you going to get there from point A to point B? The most difficult part. The most time that we spend in the work we do with clients is in the strategy part. Because that's that foundation, that's that launching pad, and you're going to always refer back to it when problems or issues come up in the production work or distribution. So some of the uh, questions, and I'm just going to go through this quickly, questions you should ask, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? What's the purpose of what you're trying to do? What's the positioning? What's the voice you have? Who are you trying to reach? I mean, you got to be able to answer these independently. It's a collective. It's a, it's a lot of meetings. It's a lot of conversations. It's a lot of beers and hanging out and really trying to see, OK, what are we trying to do here? And what are the challenges? What are you trying to overcome? So lots of issues. So again, trying to identify your best stories, this is the part that is the most interesting on our end because it's usually right in front of you. And I'll have a next slide on that. You know, the differentiators, what makes your brand different and unique? That's really the best story you can tell. And that takes time. Is it authentic? Is it perp does it have a purpose? Is it compelling? Is there a longevity to that? Is that, that aspect of what you're doing going to be around for a while? Does it inspire the consumer or the trade, depending on, again, who your audience is? So a lot of self, self questions that need to be asked. And I think really, honestly, the secret we see, the most common, it's not the CEO saying this is what our, our storytelling, our strategy is going to be. It's the person lower down who's living and breathing a, a brand. And uh, just to throw out some examples, you know, these are the elements that are right here in front of you that people experience. Talk to your consumers. Talk to your uh, trade partners. Talk to the industry. Get feedback. But a lot of times it's right in front. Goals and measurement. So again, I've talked about this. 
The goals, obviously everyone talks about quantitative goals. I have to have a number, I have to have a, an amount to show to my boss or my team. It's not always about the, uh, about the quantitative. Obviously that's extremely important, but qualitative. What's your positioning? Did you get an award for this content that you had? Is it help reposition your brand? So again, you have to really balance the qualitative and quantitative. Make sure you listen to both of those goals. And uh, on the measurement side, absolutely, you need to. Hashtag campaigns, Bitly, Google Analytics. There are a lot of great tools out there depending on the channel if it's online or offline obviously you know make sure you use those tools that are out there a lot of great free tools too and then the distribution plan what are you going to do with this great content you have this awesome content this story about Kosovo how are you going to get it out to the marketplace so make sure you look at again all the different outlets and then lastly uh, which is where I'll show uh, a film here this is a film we produced that uh, one of the, the number one adventure travel film in 2016. There's a great story about a seven day trek going up to Machu Picchu. Who's been to Machu Picchu? Okay, more hands in Kosovo, okay. Um, so this is a really uh, sort of a different trek to get up to this global icon in Machu Picchu. But very specific goals, drive business, and reposition this product, this adventure product to the industry. Very specific goals. What is the content strategy? We focused on one story, but then took that story and multiplied it out. We created seven different versions of that story. Why? Different audiences, different strategies, social, Instagram, Facebook versions, a, uh, a version for National Geographic on the media side, uh, you know, a shorter version, a trailer. So again, we created the whole suite of content. And then the distribution, definitely online and offline. So let me show you this film uh, on uh, the trek up to Machu Picchu. Pachamama is a philosophy. No es, no es solamente dos palabras. Es madre tierra, pero es eh, todo, no? Porque todo viene de la madre tierra y todo va hacia ella. ¿no? Es necesario este, pedirle como permiso, ¿no? es un permiso que se le pide a ella. Y no solo para un viaje, no para todo. Es, esa es la razón fundamental que tiene que hacerse todo por el comienzo. ¿no? Hay que empezar por el comienzo. the top of the pass at 15 to I've never been that high so <laughs> but the mountains aren't. They, they feel that there's something very spiritual about being up here. La primera vez que vi el Salcante de cerca fue como impactante, impresionante, ¿no? Y que las veces que vuelvo necesito que esa impresión se comparte, ¿entiendes? O sea, es ya como parte, yo me siento como parte de la montaña, del ambiente, de, de ese lugar. El estar ahí de por sí es... Eh, a veces uno no necesita decir palabras, es una, una cosa que te envuelve, ¿no? Es algo no lo puedes describir, no lo puedes oler, ver, sentir, pero describir así en su magnitud es, es difícil. de este, abrir un nuevo capítulo en nuestras vidas que van a durar solamente siete días es decir que el disfrute sea masivo por decir ¿no? con el grupo de gente que va con conmigo hay gente que dice no, no sé de dónde saqué fuerzas pues eso es, es eso ¿no? de que empiezas a activar esa parte, yo confío mucho, ¿sabes en qué? En el instinto de supervivencia del, del ser humano. Es 
good to be moving. I was nervous <laughs> this morning. Nervous about what? 15,000 feet? <laughs> 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 These are the perfect moments that many people try to find. Moments only, seconds, but perfect moments exist. Después de tanto cambio, finalmente uno llega a este maravilloso lugar, increíble, vivo, antiguo, extrañado, deseado lugar, ¿no? que es Machu Picchu. Nature is missing people, no people is concentrated in cities. But it's necessary not to go back to the nature once in a while. So that is a, that's a paid piece, that's paid content, but it was told as a story. It engages you, I hope. Who wants to go to Peru now? Who wants to go to Machu Picchu? So again, it's, it's really looking at people. It's bringing things down to a natural level. We specifically hired, you know, used Dalmiro as our guide. I mean, he was a great guy. He was passionate about Machu Picchu. He's passionate about the, the culture and the heritage and the, the natural environment. And it, I mean, he himself was such a great story um, on it. So again, looking at the key elements and you saw it all right there, um, you know, the location, Peru, going up to Machu Picchu. The purpose behind the film, we talked about that, the strategy, trying to create this authentic repositioning the product itself. And the story, taking people on this epic journey, going over 15,000 feet, it's not easy. Multiple characters, you know, the mountain is a character. It's imposing, it, it scares you a little, but it also engages you, and then you see people overcome it. The trekkers, you, you saw those folks. And again, this was a, that was a five minute version for film festival. Um, we've got two, two minute version, a one minute, a you know, 30 seconds. So there's shorter versions. I wanted to, I was glad we had time here today to show you the longer version so you could see really all the elements together. So multiple characters and characters involved. And Daumiro, again, the guide, he was the main one. He drove the story and we, we engaged with him. Come on, buddy. There we go. Distribution. How do we get this content out there? Whoops, sorry. Not my day with Mr. Clicker. So how do we get the content out? Big distribution deal, going out into the trade industry, engaging with all the people that were involved in this film. A lot of preparation work. You can't just post it on people's page. You have to engage and talk to them. What, are the, what do they need? What are they looking for? What version of the film do they want? The results. This is obviously the best part, seeing the distribution, the impressions, the video views, how many people are engaging with it. This is all organic. These are all real numbers. This was not an algorithm that was put out there and manipulated. This is raw results. This is individual totals being uh, added up. Going on the trade side, again, they wanted to engage with inba uh, outbound operators. We've got outbound operators now, some of the top in North America, who have approached us saying, we'd love to use this film. We want to showcase this film because, again, it helps sell the destination. Media placements, we engaged with over 80 different media outlets. Won this major award, number one adventure travel film. And then most importantly, an 8% 8, 8 increase in sales, 13, 13 times ROI. Again, looking at the original, original investment and looking at the goals and objectives behind that ROI, going back to what I talked about earlier. And then lastly, for those on the advertising side, $70,000 um, advertising value for the actual content that we produced. So some of the takeaways I talked about here, and I think we'll have a couple minutes for questions. The, str the strategic storytelling. What is your strategy? How are you gonna get your content out there? What is the story you're gonna tell? How are you gonna measure it? What are your benchmarks? Again, that, that, that strategy and plan is so important. The authentic side, 
That's our angle. I think you're seeing it out there with the growth and development of video content. Things have to be differentiated. We see that real personal experience as being a real great tool. Uh, there are lots of different strategies to it. This is high quality content produced. It's not user generated. Again, different strategy, different approach. I think it engages. I think it engaged most of you here today. So again, it depends on the audience you're trying to reach. Distribution, online, offline. How are you going to get your content? Influencers, writers, all the different outlets that are there now. Your own, your own media, you know, which you have control of, the paid media that's out there, the earned media, which is something we really specialize in. And then again, looking at that all ROI, look at the quality. It's about quality. It's about connection. And going back to the very beginning, this is about engagement with the content you're making. If it's photos, if it's editorial, or if it's video. You really want to touch that end consumer or that trade partner and really make them say, my gosh, we have to have this product or this destination on our list. So lastly, just leave you with a quote. Dig deeper to find the people and the inspirational stories that will make your destination or brand the place you envision it to be. So again, looking inside, talking to your team. So got a couple of minutes here, so uh, open to questions from anyone. Come on, there got to be some questions. Anyone? Or I answered all your questions. You have no questions on the ROI of storytelling. None, zero. You're all, you're all good.